Welcome back to the Alexandrian Codex. I am Alex. We are playing on Stardew Valley. And I'm probably going to be playing with the audio levels a little bit. As I tune this in. Because Stardew Valley's music is hella loud. And does not have an options menu. It just has a mute button. So, let us start up where we were before. Well, it's like near the end of spring, right? Yeah. I'm saving up for the summer, maybe. Replacing old tools. Going in the caves too much to be productive. Yeah, that, that sounds... Sounds familiar. Weather report. And... Oh, the flower dance. We have not romanced anyone, so we will not be going to the flower dance. It'll be pretty lonely if we do. Mildly perturbed spirits. All right, not not doing anything with that. <laughs> nope, I am not going to the dance, Mayor Lewis. So this is a turnip and a potato, if I recall correctly, and we're doing that just because I need it for the community box. The collections box? That sounds about right. I don't really remember. This is such a friendly game to jump back into, because of how calm and happy everything is. It's very not threatening. Whereas, like, jumping into Subnautica, I have meters that start going down immediately, there are angry things all around me. Or jumping into EU4 trying to remember what intrigue I was plotting. This is just like, oh no, happy, happy <laughs> farm music and butterflies and flowers and cute crops. It's quite okay. Oh, hey Mother Russia, you are up remarkably early, or on remarkably early. How's it going? I can actually see Twitch chat today. <laughs> Cool. Yeah. I just got started. Ah. You four ended up going pretty okay yesterday. Eventually. It took a while to get there, but it got there. <laughs> I, I just kept on being stupid and impatient. That's pretty funny, but a bit much. So this is done. Back into the caves, I think. Maybe? Maybe. Nah, let's... I talked a big game early on about how much I wanted to go chop things down. Oh, actually, I could... Potentially just save up and upgrade... This axe to an iron one at this point, huh? Wi-Fi was crap, yeah. Uh, all you missed was me complaining a lot about how stupid I was being and getting mad at... <laughs> getting mad at the Ottomans over and over and over for about four hours and then I finally slowed down enough to play well and it went fine. <laughs> The VODs are pretty funny, but it's, uh, not my best play. <laughs> Can I break you yet? Yeah, okay. I need to plan a lot more carefully where I'm going to plant the crops come the summer because I'm actually going to be able to afford more room for them. I can't see, I can't see. There we go. 
Mamluks have a unique government. They have some pretty neat ideas. Their uh, their government's really, really good. Uh, even if I was handling it poorly. Like, you don't have to worry about your heir dying. You never have, like, secession crises or anything. You just always have a, uh, always have a leader. So no regencies, nothing like that. It's a little hard to tell what kind of leader you're gonna have come up next, so you can't, like, cycle out your heirs. But, still pretty fun. And they start in a really good position. If you pay them pay them if you pay them patiently if you play them patiently it's uh pretty easy going and i just kept on feeling like i was taking too long and rushing and making risky decisions as long as you don't get impatient it goes quite well let's get this nah, don't need that that Mm -hmm. Do we currently have a... Oh yeah, the hose upgrading right now, I think. Ah. Flower Festival would be very cool to uh, be able to do anything at, but we won't be able to. Or Flower Dance, I guess. And we've missed one, two, three, four, five birthdays already. I'm a bad neighbor. <laughs> well, the Mamluks are... I think if the Ottomans hit them fast, they can win pretty easily. Like, they're in a pretty strong position, but the, uh... Oh, okay. The discipline that you start out with is the Ottomans is like really, really good because their national ideas give them a plus 5% to army discipline or discipline. But the Mamluks don't get anything like that for a long time. <laughs> Mamluks start out with better cavalry combat ability, but cavalry is so expensive that they can't afford to field that much of it. You could, you could probably hit them pretty early on. I don't know. It does make sense, you're right. Why the Ottomans were taking forever to go down there. It's cool that the Mamluks are actually so competitive now. They used to just kind of fall over and die. It's pretty sad. It's, you know, historically it took quite a long time for the Ottomans to move into Syria and Egypt. Do, 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 do. Am I missing anything up here? Da oh, yep. Do, 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 Every time the uh, Ottomans would get attacked or get in a war, I would feel like I needed to get involved because. I was terrified of them growing, but if you just jump in in a bunch of wars just to stop them from growing, the Ottomans manpower recovers way faster, again because of a national idea. Yeah, the, the Ottomans normally would just swoop in and annex the Mamluks in one fell swoop. And to be fair, in one good war I took about half of the land I needed for the achievement, so it should be easy going from here on out. Which is gonna be sweet. What what uh what really got to me after a few hours was the ambient sound in E4. Most places in the world the ambient noise is just like birds chirping or water flowing or something like that, but <laughs> If you're the Mamluks, or somebody with their territory in a desert, you just have this desolate wind sound constantly going. And it was 
driving me a little crazy. Ooh. The achievement is the Levant Turnabout. What you need is to max out army professionalism, which is super easy, it just takes a while. You need to annex the Ottomans, which means that the Ottomans can't exist, and that you basically have to hold four of their core territories. And Dern, Hudavendigar, uh, Constantinople, and something else? It's a pretty doable thing. I was just expecting the Mamluks to be better than they were. Oh my god, these things have so much health. This is taking way too long. Alright. Grab this and get the hell out of here. I will almost certainly finish up that achievement the next time I play. <laughs> and to be fair, I should have been able to get it in one one play session. Very easily. <laughs> I I miss summer a little bit. What's what's nice about games like this is you can see it being summer and pretty and there being flowers and plants and everything like that, but it's never hot. Right? You just get the nice parts. And when it's winter, it's just like snowy out in the game. So much you conquer Constantinople is the Russians using the Patriarch event, they get claims around there. Yeah. That should be pretty easy. I think in my game, Muscovy are allied with the Ottomans, which is pretty annoying. But despite that, I was still able to win the war. Muscovy's... Muscovy's pretty tough, but... Until they really start getting a crazy amount of troops, they're pretty easy to deal with. So early, early on, when... I first started playing Stardew Valley as part of this series, I was talking about how we needed to just get a lot of wood and not do much else because wood is so useful, and I, I should have been doing that. Wood's really useful because it's used to repair bridges that give you access to different areas, it's also used to build more things. And you get the seeds and sap. Seeds can be combined to make food, to make you work harder and longer. And the... They can also be used to plant trees, which are pretty sweet. But, um... I've been neglectful. Which isn't a huge deal, but... How long do trees take to grow back? So you'll see trees like the one I'm standing in front of right now shaking. Um, they will randomly plant themselves. I think they take a month? They take a very long time to grow. I don't really remember. Like if you completely cut down all the trees, they won't come back by themselves, so you have to go get acorns and replant them. Later on, you can get trees that actually have fruit and stuff like that, and those are really, really worth your time. Because fruit sells for a ton. Oh no, I can get one more. There we go. Oh, we got coal. Cool. Ah, uh, drop, drop, drop. <laughs> Gonna be a sad day tomorrow. It's like the spring dance, and I don't have anyone to go with. 
go with the mayor, I guess, but nah. Hmm. Go with the cat. It's not a bad idea. There's a joke in there somewhere. <laughs> bum, 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 bum. Bum. Clear and sunny. Good humor. Cool. Cabbages. <laughs> Just watered that box on accident. Now, hold on. When we... Did we... Yeah, we already donated cauliflower. So, this and that can go. Dun, dun. I know I mentioned it a lot, but Animal Crossing really was the first game of this sort of genre that I played. I, uh, I remember a partner, girlfriend of mine, in college playing a similar game to this, and I just thought it was ridiculous. Like, yeah, the music's amazing. I thought it was just so silly, like, so you farm and go mining and fight monsters, and it was a, it was a Japanese... Uh, RPG, so there was some quest that you were also embarking on. I was super judgmental about it. For, <laughs> for some stupid reason. Oh my god, that sounds so boring, just planting stuff all the time. But with no sense of irony, I was still like playing stuff like Minecraft at the time and thinking <laughs> they were totally different. <laughs> I think it's five, but let's just take all of them. Oh, I think I can skip the festival? Oh, I hope I can skip the festival. Oh, thank god. Because I don't care about the festival. What I'm in town for is to get my hoe, haha, uh -huh, and to upgrade the axe chain. You look so sad, Shane. Oh, I don't have time to talk with you. Alright, fine. Do 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 do. <laughs> oh, the flower dance is in the forest. Wow, shows that I have no idea what I'm talking about. It's a lot. Yeah, but like, damn it. <laughs> oh, Clint! I want my hoe back. That's sad, Shane can't go to the flower dance because he has to work. Yeah, the, um... We've been talking about playing Minecraft, but... It's... It's really inundated. With, uh... <laughs> with people streaming and recording it, and it has been for a long time, we might still play it anyway. It does sound fun. And I know Minecraft has continued to add a lot of content since it's, uh, it year over year. Like, there's tons of stuff in there I would not recognize. Okay, now we still suck at killing stuff. I haven't really addressed that, but... I want iron... ...and coal, so... ...here I am. So much health. Alright, tell you what. I'm just gonna ignore... <laughs> the monsters in here. U4 with no DLC. Yeah, man. If, uh, if U4 could be rolled back to, like, the release version, I might actually play that. I have some very good memories of that game. Hell, I might even play Divine Wind. 
uh, E3 Divine Wind. Because I played a lot of that back in the day. For the time being, I'm pretty happy just playing a little bit of everything. View 4 can be nice, but there's a hell of a lot going on, and for people who don't play the game, it's hard to keep track of what exactly is happening, just because there's, you know, at any given time, half a dozen things on the screen you need to be looking at. Yeah, the sliders in U3 were pretty sweet. Here he's overrun with monsters. Ah, okay. I do need to bite the bullet, admit that my sword isn't good enough, and come back later. This is, this is silly. How many times I have to hit stuff? Da -da 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 -da. I don't remember what the next weapon is or how to get it. I assume you buy it. Probably makes sense to buy it. Diamond sword? No, not quite. Uh, there's similar stuff to that, but that's at the end of the game. I like how that said this area is overrun with monsters, and yet there's been like four things in here, and there's a staircase out of here. Not really overrun. Ah, oh, yes. <laughs> I remember playing this last year, and the, uh... The place Cora and I were staying in... It was the middle of winter or at least getting to the middle of winter. And one of our windows in our bedroom didn't quite close, so there was always a slight draft. And this, like, quiet sound of wind that you're hearing right now just made me so, so paranoid that the window was open or that it was raining or something outside. It was very confusing playing this at night, going like, is it storming out there? No. What the hell am I hearing? <laughs> The reason that I will hunt down and kill monsters, even if I don't need anything from them exactly, is because it's summer there. Ah! Yeah, yeah, because you are in the other hemisphere. That's pretty cool. It gets hot. <laughs> yeah. Where we live doesn't get super hot and it doesn't get super cold. It's pretty nice. I grew up in parts of the United States that got very hot and very cold. So being in a very mild environment is amazing. Oh, is that our first bomb? I think it might be. This is why I hate bats. It's hard for me to imagine growing up a place that doesn't get snow. Winters there is just rain, yeah. I mean, winter here is pretty much just rain. We get some, some snow, but it doesn't really stick. Where I grew up, there'd be... Uh, a foot and a half, two feet, three feet of snow. Was that like half a meter of snow? Depending on the year. Endless rain. That sounds kind of nice in its own way. I really like the amount of rain I get here. Rain is probably my favorite weather. I've seen snow once. I can't imagine just seeing it once. Snow isn't... Snow is nice when you only see it once. But when it's just all day, every day, for weeks and weeks and months that you don't see the ground. It's just the stupid frozen white stuff on the ground all the time. And it's cold and it's wet and it gets everywhere. <laughs> You get, you get tired of it fast. <laughs> I 
the upside, you do get to play with uh, making like snowmen and snow angels and snowball fights and stuff like that. That's pretty fun. What am I hearing? Oh, okay. It'll be nice once the speed of the game picks up a little bit and I'll be able to run around more frantically. Store, 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 store. What degrees Celsius? What is that? 90... 100, 104? Yeah, I, uh... <laughs> 40 Celsius. Uh, let's see. Hottest summer I ever had where I grew up was uh, like 43, 44 Celsius. It would get down to negative 20 Celsius. Negative 23, negative 25 maybe. Christmas day is normally 40 degrees. That's crazy. Yeah. Sounds nice. I still have to Google uh, Fahrenheit to Celsius calculations. Because we're taught the conversion rates in school, but Americans never ever use the metric system for some stupid reason. Oof. Oof, oof. Cora just made brownies. Not really taught them, it's more like a facade. I I had teachers try to teach me the metric system. Like in um in my science classes, they always talked about how important it was to learn the metric system and we always use metric units in physics and chemistry and stuff like that. Sounds nice when you don't have it. Yeah, maybe. But I'm used to being having very humid Oh, hey, we got an achievement. Greenhorn! Or earning 15,000 gold. I used to have summers that were in the 90s, low hundreds, being humid. No, I don't want a brownie. Thank you, though, Cora. <laughs> it's just, I smell it. My brain's like, ooh, hello. Fruit trees. Hmm. Cora was just asking about this. Fruit trees take an entire season to grow. If the area isn't clear, they'll be slow to grow or won't grow at all, so you need to clear out area. Once it's mature, it'll produce delicious fruit every day while it's in season. They're really good. The forecast for tomorrow is going to be sunny and clear. That's okay. Mildly perturbed, so we can't break those geodes. Fahrenheit overestimates the heat. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, Fahrenheit's really weird. Like, so, Celsius is like, 100 is boiling, 0 is freezing. It's pretty easy, right? For us, I don't, I don't even know what boiling is. Um, I know that freezing is negative 32 degrees. No, it's 32 degrees, sorry, not negative 32 degrees. And boilings in the hundreds? Somewhere? It's a really weird system. We could get a tiny fruit tree. <laughs> I don't... I don't think I've ever had fruit tree. Fruit trees. Not really. That sounds nice. I, um... 
I've had gardens. I've had lots of gardens, but I've never had fruit trees. What kind of fruit trees did you have? I think you've talked about this before, but I can't remember. So many. <laughs> you grew up in Arizona in Southern California, didn't you? I didn't realize fruit trees were very good down there. Orange women, grapefruit, pomegranate, apricot, nectarine, and blackberry vines? Seriously? That's pretty crazy. I thought thought where you grew up was pretty much desert. <laughs> Americans need to be independent and different. Nah. You have to, uh, it's more we need to be stubborn, I guess, is why we stick to Fahrenheit. We need to irrigate really well. Ah. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, my, my grandparents were pretty smart about irrigation and farming as well. I wonder how they learned all that. Gora and I were talking last night or this morning about like how hard it is to learn how to prepare certain things. Like, for example, why it's bad to eat um, potatoes if they're green or if they have sprouts or like what about potatoes is actually bad for you. It's that they're part of the nightshade family and they will that like boiling them doesn't actually remove the toxin from it just puts it in the water that the only way to really remove the toxin is to deep fry them how, how the hell did people figure out how to oh solanine yeah solanine um how did people used to figure this stuff out without google or without the internet like how would you figure out how irrigation works you'd have to like go get a book at the library and read about it i guess just sounds so much more intentional than what we do now. Because if you have a question, regardless of how weird or specific that question is, you're like 30 seconds away from finding an answer. Yeah, a lot of parents learn, or a lot of parents, a lot of farmers learn from their parents, probably. Yeah. And the, uh, the federal government, yeah, try and fail, try and fail. The federal government of the United States in part of the late 20th century, mid to late 20th century, actually made a pretty concerted effort in trying to teach people how different things worked. Like, um, they offered programs on how... Oh, that's 5,000. Ew, well. Excuse I don't have copper bars here. I'll be back, Clint. Do you have classes on how to grow crops, or how to rotate your fields, or how to properly irrigate things, and things like that? And you know, the, uh, I'm sure the USDA, the United States Department of Agriculture, probably still has stuff like that, but it was much more prominent in my mind in the 30s, 40s, and 50s. Now, most of the farming in the United States is not done by small farms. It's done by um, large companies like Monsanto and large factory farms. And the music gets all sad as soon as I start talking about Monsanto. That's really funny. It knows, yeah. I 
and this game kind of touches on that subject matter, right? Like the disappearance of small farms, the rise of uh, big stores, and mega corporations mining, <laughs> mining, <laughs> mining food. I was gonna say mining food, farming and stuff like that. And uh, Stardew Valley kind of extols the virtues of having a small farm and a small community and caring about people and taking care of each other. But, uh, and that's, that's great. It's fun and it's feel good and it's great, but as much as it talks about how good that is, I feel like, <laughs> no, no, I'm not thinking too much into it. Um, all art is political and video games are art. So it, it has this message, and it's a very repetitive, bash you over the head kind of message. I'm not thinking too much. I mean, literally the biggest conflict in the game is between the local market, Pierre's, and Jojo Mart, which is a stand-in for Walmart or something like that. Jojo Mart wants to replace the community uh, clubhouse place the community recreation center with a warehouse and it's seriously just warehouse whereas if you don't work with joja it'll turn into a cool little rec center so it's definitely like very uh buy locally consume locally oriented and that's great but it doesn't it doesn't necessarily give the player tools by which they can use that kind of mentality going forward in their own lives. It more just like complains about how bad this thing is, demonstrates to the player how bad this thing is, but short of the players quitting their jobs, moving out to the country and starting their own farm, it's hard to really act on any of the lessons or meanings that Stardew Valley tries to talk about. Like, like, it's very important for... Yeah, the message can totally be the purpose, but sometimes you... You know, you put a message out there without giving people the means of... Acting on that message, of using what that message is talking about, of moving forward with what they've learned. And you, uh... The art is not... Immediately useful in a direct way anyway not useful overall of course it's useful if it gets people to think and reconsider how they look at the world but die, die, die. yeah maybe it's just flavor it could be that but if it were just flavor it wouldn't be the core mechanic of the game right like the game opens with showing cubicles and showing people dead in their cubicles or sick in their cubicles or really sad in their cubicles or that they had been fired and it talks about how unhappy your character was working in that environment so it's very it's pretty hit you over the head with like doesn't living in a corporate society suck don't you wish you could go back to like this simple time and this simple way of living doesn't that sound great and It's a little simplistic in that uh, that analysis, right? Because there's some really cool things that come from living in a really industrialized society. Like, oh, I don't know. Industry. <laughs> Cars. <laughs> Advanced healthcare. The <laughs> space programs. Stuff like that. But, uh... Yeah. And the proposed solution in this game, as is embodied by the protagonist, is just to leave it all behind and move away to where your impact in a community is more magnified because you make up a larger percentage of that community. And that's an interesting uh, proposal for how we can make the world a better place or how a better world looks like or acts like. Because 
I don't know, that's pretty irresponsible in some ways. It's cool to go start your own farm and that's very empowering, but it doesn't necessarily address the... doesn't get rid of Jojo Mart, right? Eventually you can drive Jojo Mart out of business in this game, so maybe that's the lesson if we all <laughs> work together then we can be more community oriented and uh, drive away corporations, but it's very wishy-washy. And some corporations are pretty good. <laughs> some, uh, some not so much, but... I don't know. The game's not... Not, um, directly political. Like, it doesn't dress itself up that way. But all art is political in some way or another. Hmm, <laughs> because everything's political. Ah, maybe it's just taking advantage of Urban Knight's longing for rural simplicity. Without actually caring and making a positive impact on them at all, could just be for monetary reasons that they chose that theme. Now that's interesting. Because that resonates with me, this is incredibly relaxing to play. And if that was just done because, well, it works, I mean, it, it does. <laughs> it works very well. I don't know. I'd like to see what the, uh, what the author game author, game designer, thought about it. <clears throat> Let's see. Since I'm pontificating on this, I'm actually going to go check out the FAQ on his website. Yeah. Stardew Valley with developed entire, entirely by Concerned Ape, who is Eric Barone. Um, hmm, about, yeah, I don't know, I'd be, I'd be curious to see if Eric, uh, got political about this, because he definitely has a platform to get political if he wants to. I want tiller because we're going to be making way more crops than anything else. Oh crap, those split later on too. Ooh, I might have picked the wrong one. Oh, well, whatever. Yeah, yeah. There is a lot of marketing towards people about natural things. And most of the time, it does seem pretty obviously more about making money than being sincere. That's a very good point. That's going to rain tomorrow, which means we are upgrading our fucking... Hi, me sell hats. Okay, poke. Hey, poke. Come to old, old house, poke. Bring coins. Oh, it's a hat mouse, not a hat cat. Oops. Mom just sent me 500 bucks. Oh no, mom didn't send it to me. Mom found grandpa's old money and gave me some of it. Okay. So there are two days left. What are we gonna do? Well, I think we're gonna upgrade the watering can. Old old house. It's the old old house is down south. That creepy abandoned house I was talking about would have a NPC move into it who sold hats. We can go check it out. I don't think that um, all um, all things that sell themselves as being 100% natural are necessarily all fraudulent or 
misleading or doing it for the marketing. Though I, I think you're right that the lion's share probably do. But yeah, I think a lot of them are. Like, the idea of natural, too. Like, oh no, this is all natural. Motherfucker, everything. Literally everything is natural. Even the artificial processes, industrial processes by which we make medicine are natural processes. Like, it's not like we're breaking the laws of nature or physics to make any of this stuff. I get that natural is supposed to mean that, like, it occurs within nature. But so does nightshade, so does poison, so does allergies, so do so many other things. Like, something being natural doesn't necessarily make it better, or even good. Yeah, the, the larger issue, perhaps, is that there's uh, no regulation for what natural means in the United States. Yeah. We have a lot of myth about food. Here we go. Here's the hat cat, or mouse. See, he's cute, cute little man. Hi, old poke. Bring me some coins. Good. Me sell hats. I don't know what the poke. Is it poke? Is it poke? Pock? I don't know what this word is supposed to be. Yeah, you can buy hats from them. The hats serve no purpose at all. Beyond, you know, adorning your head in a cute manner. I don't know, might be, <laughs> might be reason enough. Nutrition education in the United States is probably something, and possibly nutrition education everywhere probably needs a serious overhaul. Makes you really frustrated is when you notice yourself buying a food because it looks natural in some subliminal way, like has a leaf on it or a picture of a cow in a field. Yeah, yeah, I, it's good graphic design, I guess, in that it works, but... I tend to I tend to have the opposite problem. I buy things that look more synthetic. <laughs> or more engineered. More than natural things. Natural things I'm like, wow, no one's put any thought or effort into this beyond like growing it. This is just the default thing. I bet somebody could engineer a better version of it. And so if I see something that looks like it's been designed, I'll be much more into that than the uh all natural version. As a kid, I, uh, and a kid, I mean even into adulthood, I really drank a lot of energy drinks and stuff like that. I like the whole idea of engineering food and drinks to be better. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's tons of food that are more nutritious or more... Um, produce a greater yield because they've been engineered. Most of our foods, in fact. And hell, that goes for even crops that are not food, say, like... Uh... Do, 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 um... Like a classic example people talk about is marijuana. And that... Before... <laughs> Before, uh, before it was really grown for recreational purposes, that the strains you got could only have so much THC in it. But since they were bred selectively for greater and greater THC uh, quantities, that stronger than it ever has been. And I mean, you can look at the evolutionary history of corn, for example. The earliest type of corn looks like wheat. It's it's tiny. And we've just 
turned it into something very different than it once was. And people talk about uh, genetically modified foods as being a bad thing, which blows my mind because every food is gen genetically modified. Maybe not using processes like CRISPR or other literal gene splicing programs, but every food is genetically modified. We selectively breed everything we eat, everything we where every pet we have everything unless we explicitly make a point not to in which case the natural environment that that thing is from genetically selects what it should look like like the whole idea of something having a natural state is ridiculous because nature is completely arbitrary as an idea like we like this idea of the natural and it's very complicated, this idea. Because the natural is essentially everything that we're not. We, we exist outside of nature, by definition, for the definition to work. And uh, particularly in the American tradition, nature has been venerated as this thing that we've defiled and defied and betrayed. And in some ways, yeah, absolutely, we've done terrible things to our environments, to other species, to natural landscapes. But it's not like they were inherently better or worse before we got there. Because the universe is not... It doesn't have an idea of good or bad or right or wrong or anything else. Like when, um, some of the first things written about North America when settlers got here were how much virgin, unspoiled country we had here ready for development and improvement. That's what they remarked on. And this idea that, uh, you know, territory needed to be improved to be developed was uh, was very popular at the time, but that's what our role in the world was, to, you know, be fruitful. And now, it's a very popular idea that conservationism is important. Now, I don't mean to contest that. Conservationism... C conservationism. Conserva... Conser damn it. I keep almost saying conservatism is important. Not what I'm trying to say. Conservation efforts are vitally important particularly because they affect us and they affect other forms of life ability to survive. But, uh... As, a As a man in a beloved movie once said, life, uh, finds a way. Like, regardless of what we do or do not do, some life on this planet will find a way. We do not have the capability to wipe life out on this planet. So we're pretty capable of making it hard to inhabit for ourselves. We, well, uh, you say we had no idea of understanding how cautious we needed to be back then, but that's not true. Uh, there are native traditions talking about... Um, in the southwestern part of the United States, there's the... There are traces of agriculture, traces of road networks of pretty decent sized towns and cities, and they had trade networks spanning the better part of the continent. But all up until a certain point, these cities were thriving until they weren't. And in the traditions, oral traditions of the peoples down there, you ask them, yeah, what happened here? And their answer is that they used everything up. That they fucked over nature so badly that they had to go back to living in the wild. Like, they over-farmed it, they deforested too much, and they destroyed the local environment. It's not entirely true. The real reality was that there was a big drought related to 
natural climate change going on at the same time. And while they did overexploit the land they were on, it was also in the process of shifting from like a swampy kind of land to desert. But like before white people ever made it to the United States, there were people in places that are now part of these states that had traditions of we made society once civilized with cities and roads, roads and trade networks. We, you know, dug too deeply and greedily, if you'll take that analogy. And it fucked us and it fucked the environment and it was a mistake and we should never go back to it. And then, you know, cut to a couple hundred, few hundred years later, get some Spaniards on some boats showing up going, oh, we should do should pave over all of this and set up plantations and enslave these people. It's, uh... Awareness about how certain things like climate change was only possible because of new technologies? Uh... Kinda... Kind of. I mean, these stories... We talk about oral traditions as an abstract thing, right? Like, we say like, oh, well, they had this oral tradition of whatever, and we hear that as, like, story, as, like, mythology. But to them, oral tradition was a literal, accurate depiction of history. No more or less accurate than scientific data is today, or scientific studies. So they... They thought it was as real as we take scientific surveys today. Now, I know for us, we want data, we want studies, we want technology to be able to make these analyses, but you don't necessarily need satellite imagery to tell that we're changing the planet. You just need to pay attention and listen to people who've been here before you. We're pretty bad at doing. Okay, cool. Excellent data break. Geodes. This is all watering on its own. Yes. Cool, 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 cool. Oral tradition is fascinating. Uh, oral tradition naturally has the notable problem of changing over time, as stories have to do. But there's a lot of value in them. Oh, we have a lot to donate to the museum. Is that a chicken on a stump in your room? Yeah, it's a chicken statue. I... Yep. It's a very dis <laughs> distinguished chicken. Um... Is there anything else we needed to donate? Topaz. Wharf scroll. <laughs> wow, I really should have gone to the museum a while ago. Okay, amethyst. Quartz. Hey, go make Gunther a happy man. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I also need however many geodes I have here. I don't have any geodes? Ready. Hello. Uh, that seems to be true. No geodes? Okay, alright, okay. I like that your storage trunks are outside the house in this game. Are you referring to my storage trunks in real life? I always have mine in my house in Minecraft. Ah, you can put them in your house. But because nothing comes and blows up your storage trunks in this game, I put them outside. Yeah, it can look kind of crowded and ugly if you don't do it right. <laughs> like my Subnautica base is starting to look like, for example. Just like lockers on lockers on lockers forever. Mm 
There we go. A A M. I could have sworn we were supposed to donate those glass shards. Ah, no. Nope. We already turned in glass shards? We did. Wow. Okay. So, if you are watching on YouTube, it looks like it's been about an hour. So, I will see you tomorrow.